Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Melfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. TV and radio superstar Seema Jaswal is, well, one of the biggest names in sports right now. She's covered almost all of them, and I'm delighted to say she joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? Oh, that was a lovely introduction, Alex. Thank you very much. And yeah, it's wonderful to be here. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm delicious, but not as good as you. A, to be beautiful, and then B, to be talented, and C, to be credible, really is the golden recipe of show business, isn't it? Congratulations. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, it's been a really interesting year, actually. It's just been one thing after the other and I know you mentioned all the sports and it has been just one sport after another but it's been it's been a lot of fun and I've really really enjoyed it how did you find your niche it seems to me in show business you end up where you want to be just by default did you always want to be a sports broadcaster and journalist no I didn't actually I went to university and I studied sociology and politics and uh when I graduated, I realised that actually I don't think I want to do anything to do with either of those subjects, but I want to venture into a, co- a career that allows me to do something that I really love and really enjoy. And for me, I've always been very, very sporty and very passionate about sports. My uh, granddad was a tennis champion in Uganda, where my family are from, and my whole family played tennis, so I grew up playing tennis. Um, and also, I played every sport you can imagine under the sun at school, so I thought, you know what, sport is really for me. So. I, after a lot of thought, and I, I thought about going into tennis coaching, actually, because I'm a professional tennis coach, but then I thought, I don't want to turn my hobby and my love into my job. So I ended up sending a CV out to a few places and ended up getting a job as a runner at Sky Sports News. Mm. And that is exactly where it started for me. I was there um, as a runner, and as you know, working as a runner, you get to meet everybody behind the scenes, from the directors to the producers to mm. the researchers. And I realized that I wanted to be in in front of the camera, which I think every runner that, that ever worked in the industry wants to be. But I, I learned very quickly that that's what was for me. And it sort of just went from there. I love that sort of story, the Dermot O'Leary story, the Ben on uh, Daybreak story, that you can go from being the warm-up, go from being the camera guy or the lighting guy to ending up on screen. And that still happens in TV. That's brilliant, it isn't does. it? It does. It really does, Ben, Alex. It really does. Because I it allows you to get a real solid, solid understanding and grasp of what the industry is about. Because you don't really know what happens to make a TV show. and you, you never really quite understand how much goes on to put that show on the telly. And when I was a runner, it opened my eyes completely. I had no idea what a gallery was like or that mm. there was a, a, a DA in there giving you counts and there was someone that, that's a vision mixer making sure it all looks good. And, you know, you've got graphics. You've got so many different people in that gallery that come together to make the programs that we see on television. And I realized that being the presenter, although it's not the easiest job to have gone into, I thought, you know what, this is really for me. I really want to rise to the challenge. And I actually took some advice off of the boss from Sky Sports News. And I said to him, you know what, Andy, I'd really love to be a, um, a to be a presenter. What can I do? And he said, well, you can stay here for about six years and work your way up, as, as a lot of people do. And I thought, six years? When you're 21 years old, you think that's a <laughs> lifetime. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to stick around here for six years of production. So he said, oh, go away and get some experience. And what I managed to do was um, host lots of different sort of live events, get experience, and then I ended up getting a job with CBBC Sports Round, which was my first break into telly, and that's where it really started for me. Mm. It didn't do Michael McIntyre any harm being a runner. I mean, again, you get seen by everyone, and I think if you're any good, you'll notice very quickly because they need reliable, good quality people, because if not, the whole thing falls like a stack of cards, doesn't it? Absolutely so, and I think it's also about really... Uh, getting on with everyone that you work with, immersing yourself in the team. And I think the nicer you are to people and the more you get on with people, the more they'll sort of open doors for you and give you that chance. And I think that also worked really well for me as well because I was really enthusiastic and I just... I just really wanted to make it happen. So I think that that helped as well. Let's talk about family because you mentioned Uganda. I mean, it's a million miles away from where we're sat today in the media. I went to Uganda only once, actually, and it was actually for a sad occasion. It was when my grandmother passed away. So my my parents had moved from from Uganda to here during the the time when Idi Amin, the dictator, he kicked all of the Asians out of the country and everyone sort of dispersed and my parents ended up here I have family over in Canada some in Dubai they're sort of all around the world and um, when my grandmother passed away we went back to, to Uganda my mum took me with her for the very first time so that was when I got to see Uganda so it wasn't a, a happy occasion mm. but I did actually get to see the country and uh, I know that at the moment 
it's it's quite tough there at the moment. But at the time that I went, it was just it was just lovely. It was beautiful, so natural, so untouched. It was just really raw. I think Uganda would summarise as natural beauty, just in its raw sense. It mm. was really really stunning and and lovely people. So it was it was a lovely experience in that sense to go back. The nearest I've got is I did a breakfast show, believe it or not, in Nairobi when I was 18 for six months. And again, Africa does change your life. Being in a place that is so full of incredible wealth and then incredible poverty does teach you many lessons, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And I learned that exactly when I, I've been out in India recently. And a lot of people have thought that, you know, I've probably been to India many times because my roots are in India. But as I've said, my, my family are from Uganda. So when I was offered a job role with Star Sports to go over to India and host the Indian Super League, I'd never been. I'd never been before. So I went over for the first time and I and that's what struck me first, but the poverty and just the way that we live, you end up feeling so grateful for what you have because you see how many people just don't have even a fraction of what we, we take advantage of and they still have a smile on their face every mm. day. And when you went to your parents and said, I want to be in show business, I want to be on TV, I want to be in sports, how did they react? I mean, my parents have always been really, really relaxed and very laid back. I was quite fortunate to have no restrictions around me. My parents were always always encouraging me to, to sort of follow my dream. I think there is nobody in my family that's ever gone in to television, media, showbiz. Uh, my dad now likes to tell me that, you know, it's partly I've, I've got his genes because he's a musician and he was on telly when he was like 12 back in Uganda. <laughs> so he always thinks that that's why it happened for me, uh, which is really cute and I love that story. But really... Nothing worse I than think, people stealing glory, is it? I know. <laughs> I'm a big dad, so he's allowed to. Uh, but he, he, he for, for my parents, they, they always encourage me to do what I want. I want and to follow my dream, but I don't think I think even now sometimes they can't really believe that I've I've done the things that I have because it's just been a complete adventure and a complete whirlwind. But they never restricted me and they always encouraged me. And I think any career path that I'd chosen, I would have had their support. Isn't that wonderful? And then we look at where you've ended up. I look at the amount of sports you've done and wonder how you haven't been out your depth because you can be very quickly caught out and sports fans are totally unforgiving if they see any weakness, they'll jump on you, especially in a Twitter sphere, won't they? You nailed it there. And I think football fans are extremely unforgiving because there's so much passion when it comes to the sport. Mm. I think uh, the key is um, when, when you're learning a new sport like they have with the snooker and the darts and the motorsport, I think you just have to prepare, just like with any job you do, even when you're sitting sitting in an exam or studying at university or whatever it may be, you have to prepare. And for me, it has taken, you know, hours behind the scenes of going through my stuff, researching, talking to people, talking to experts, learning from those that have done it before me, that have done it brilliantly before me and have done it even better than me. And I think you just have to learn and absorb from the people around you and uh, keep on top of, of what's going on in, in that particular realm. So... With the Premier League, you know, it's, it's constant, you know, it's mm. every day reading the papers and knowing what's going on and having an idea of well, what's happening in each club. And it was the same with the snooker and the darts. I mean, can you imagine when I was offered that role, like that, well, both roles, <laughs> snooker and darts, never in my life would I ever think I would venture into those sports, like the last ones I thought of. But because I'm enthusiastic about sports and I genuinely, genuinely really do, do love it. I, uh, I sat down, did my research, spoke to people, as I said, and I really ended up enjoying it. But you're right, you can get caught out very quickly, so do your homework. You can't fake it on live TV either. Right. You only have one take. You only yeah. have one time to do it, and what you say is out there. So I think for that reason alone, just making sure you're, you're fully on top of everything is important. How long did it take you to get that confidence to look like you were totally at home? It's sort of a combination. I don't know if I can quantify it in terms of Time, but I can say that different experiences have led me to feeling that confident and feeling like, you know what, I can own this. I think when I was out in India, that was a real learning curve for me because I went out to host uh, their flagship Premier League shows for, for Star Sports and I was there for 18 months. Mm -hmm. I also hosted a three-month Indian Super League tournament, which was back-to-back -back sort of live live football matches over the of, of those three months. And for me, just feeling confident in terms of being a presenter and owning that, that seat and owning the stage and being out, out, able to conduct myself in a live TV environment, that was really, really important. And once you've got that, then the knowledge just sort of fits into it. And I think after that, I felt like I could do anything.
because mm. I, it was really a challenge when I was out there. And uh, the viewing figures were, were huge out there. Uh, 629 million viewers for the ISL over three months wow. was just mind-boggling. So I think once I'd done that, I think that was probably the turning point where I thought, you know what, I've presented to this big an audience and now and I managed to do it with, with football players that weren't so known because that some of them were local Indians and some of them past players. And now with the Premier League, which is a league that I follow and I love, I can, I can do this. And mm. um, there's little experiences, I think, along the way that help you to build up to that. I'm sorry that I've got to ask you this next question because you're brilliantly talented at what you do and I'm only interested in talent. I'm not interested in box ticking or who gets what job for what reason. If you're good at it, you should get it. But I just wonder where we're at now. For me, uh, it's been probably the most depressing couple of weeks in show business and confusing too. Let's start at the beginning. Have you ever felt like you've either been disadvantaged or advantaged being an Asian woman, especially in sport? You know what? I haven't. I haven't. I've been one of the, the lucky ones, I think, in the sense that I've never felt that that's worked against me in any way. Mm. I've been fortunate to work around some brilliant people just from the, the time I was a, a runner to, to now. And the professionalism of the people I work with has been incredible. I think that I think the experience of others may have been different, but for me, it, it hasn't been like that. And I think the landscape is certainly changing mm. when it comes to not just women in sport, uh, Asians in the workplace. I think it, it's Asian women, sorry, in sport as well. I think I think it's changing and I think it's definitely a lot better now than it may have. You get to where you get to based on merit. You know, I mm-hmm. think I, I try to not think of all of those, those things and I think about just being the best I can possibly be and I think that's the way it should be. I think though, more than all of that, tenacity will get you so far but if you haven't got ability and talent like you have, you'll struggle. I wonder where you go next. Here's what bothers me about you. I've, I've watched a lot of your clips and because I'm not particularly interested in sport, you're not on my radar. When can we see you doing mainstream stuff? Because you deserve to be doing network. What, what are your ambitions or are you happy as you are? Because you're completely successful and you have no need to want to be uh, doing the one show or anything like that. Well, do you know what? I would love to, to bridge that gap between sport and maybe venturing into entertainment and, and mm. doing more of those sorts of things. That's something I think that's very close to my heart as well. I think in terms of life at the moment, sport just seems to be presenting itself to me over and over again. Mm. I, um, I'm posting uh, the snooker on uh, Eurosport later in December. Just- in the snooker again with the BBC next year so those are sort of things that are, are, are already there and already happening but one thing that's always been my dream is to, to venture into a show like like a this morning like a chat show that mm. kind of thing that would be the dream for me actually to, to move into that sphere and possibly nail both I think you'd be perfect at it. And and do some sort of chat. Well, I hope so. I hope so. If you can do the things you've done in sport, and I honestly think it is the most difficult form of broadcasting because it's live and it's moving, it's constantly changing. If you can do that well, doing any other form of radio or TV has got to be a walk in the park, let's face it, because there aren't that many moving parts with any other show, are there? Yeah, you're right. It's it's moving constantly. and You you can't really prepare. You can prepare only so much. Mm But, um, yeah, I think comes with its own challenges. Just brilliant. Last night you were telling me you were at the ITV Gala. That must have been fun. Uh, it was quite fun. I was so excited. I'd never been to the ITV Gala before. And I actually was just like, so starstruck. I saw Holly Willoughby. I saw uh, <laughs> oh, Emma Willis, who was hosting it. It's Simon Cowell, Nicole Scherzinger. It was just really, really cool. Uh, Jennifer Hudson was singing on stage. She was brilliant. They had Jonathan Ross on stage doing a little bit of um, his show. And... Oh, it was really, really, really good, actually. And it was just nice to be in the company of, of lots of different presenters that are really seriously talented in, in mm. their field and that I aspire to be as good as one day as well. Do you ever have tantrums? Come on, tell me sometimes you Do could I lose it and yeah, throw your headphones at the wall. I, I, my work colleagues, they call me a diva, and I have no idea why, <laughs> because I haven't ever had a diva. Haven't. I really haven't. I, it might happen one day. I Would you do know, one tomorrow just for me? I think that would be lovely. I will. <laughs> I think it's about time I did. I have to. I have to. It's just not. I guess it's 
not really in good nature, but I, I just wonder if I'm pushed that far. You never quite know. You'll be the first to know about it. Oh, I'd love if to. I have a decent job. Hey, listen, congratulations with everything. Such a fantastic life and career. And uh, I think you're going to be a big star in the future. You've got such a natural gift. You look so at home on TV. And that's the art to make it look like you're just talking to one person is such a gift. Uh, congratulations, Seema Jaswal. You can find her by going to Twitter and uh, just put the name in YouTube and you can see all the clips there as well. When are you next on the telly? Oh, when am I next on? Well, I'm on uh, next Saturday, next weekend, next Wednesday, but that's for the Premier League, so that goes out all around the world, um, and that's going to be literally when all the Premier League fixtures on. I'm literally on telly, so. Um, but again, that doesn't go out in the UK, but around the world. But I'm on Eurosport in December for the snooker. I'll be starting my Channel Four Motorsport very, very soon, and then uh, the darts on Channel Four in January. Beautiful. So uh, I will keep you posted. But you've been absolutely wonderful to talk to you and so generous with your lovely words. And uh, I'd love to have this call every Monday morning. Oh, brilliant. Pleasure. <laughs> Seema Jaswal, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alex.